Quick introduction, uh, she's a career development facilitator who guides uh, individuals through self-awareness uh, so their clients work with their personalities and strengths in order to make the most uh, largest possible impact, both in their work and in their worlds. A former Peace Corps volunteer with experience with organizations including AmeriCorps, Teach for America, and the Peace Corps. She works with individuals who want to live their passion through their careers. How many times do you have passion in their exercise? Her organization, Be the Change Careers. She's been the president of the Maryland Career Development Association, certified as a global career development facilitator, advanced resume writer. She has a doctorate in management, master's in social work, and frequent presenter on a variety of topics, including profit and social value. So we're delighted that Ron is here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excited to be here, and um, yes, I was listening to all the passion that's in here, and um, and so what I want to start out with is kind of giving you my perspective of who I am. So thank you so much for for the introduction and for bringing me here, and um, and basically my professional background is in the nonprofit international development world. So this is me in in South Africa. And what I learned by um, working a lot of nonprofits is that a lot of people um, were there because they believed in the cause, but the actual work that they were doing was not really a good fit for them. So if they were a people person, maybe they're writing grants or working on reports. And, um, and I saw that that led to a lot of burnout and a lot of bitterness and even sometimes resentment. So we all know that burnout has a really horrible impact on ourselves. Um, but in the nonprofit world, it can also really impact the people that they wanted to help or the causes that they wanted to help. And so when I transitioned to be a career consultant about five years ago, my main mission, you know, the reason why I do this work is to, is to basically prevent burnout so that people can really make the impact that they want to make in the world. And as I was going through this, I also realized that, um, so I started Be The Change Career Consulting, um, primarily work with people in the international nonprofit fields, but it's broader than that. And by working with other types of people, I realized that the process that I had developed was applicable beyond just the nonprofit world. And so then I've created um, something called My Career Design Studio. So this is an online self-paced course that people can, so some of the exercises that we're gonna do today, I've taken from that. But it really walks you through the process of understanding who you are, what your goals are, um, what kind of life you wanna live, and, um, and then start translating that into job titles. And then from there to come up with a strategy that works with your strengths so that, um, and the other thing that's really important is that the self-reflection, knowing who you are, what your strengths are, can also really help you in your job search. Because there's so much advice out there on how to get a job. And um, some of it works great for people, and so they're going out, okay, it's all about going out there and passing out your business cards and talking to everybody. Does not work well for introverts. And, but introverts have a different kind of talent. <coughs> tend to be much more empathetic and deep listeners, which is a great way to build relationships. So knowing who you are, knowing what your strengths are, knowing what comes natural for you can help you in your job search as well as beyond. And, um, and so we're gonna just kind of do some things today and I'm gonna make this as interactive as possible. I always try to cram too much into my presentations so we're gonna, um, but I agree with um, the fact that there's a lot of um, connections and energies in, um, here that I want us to get a chance to dig into a little bit deeper. So we're gonna do a little bit of group work later on um, that allows you to get to know each other a little bit better, but also start thinking about strategies that are gonna work for you. Um, and like I said, I, you know, I'm gonna pack a whole lot in. I will give a time as we go through for questions. So, um, so, you know, if you've got something, I will get to you. And so let's just start with the process of career design and what I consider career design to be. And, and so basically, it's starting with 
what kind of contribution do you want to make? You know, what, um, so it could be something as broad as I want to be a part of ending poverty. It could be I want to make a contribution to, um, to a company that I believe in. It could be I want to earn more money. Um, but it, to, in order to help my family, help my community. But having something that can pull you forward is an essential part of career design. It doesn't have to be super specific, but it needs to be something that gives you energy to work toward that. Also, knowing the kind of life that you want to live. Too often we focus just on the job, and we might find a job that we like, but it takes over the rest of our lives. And then family suffers, other things that are important to us suffer. So I really try to work with my clients, what kind of life do you want to live, and how does your work support that? For some people, that is work. Work is their life. That's a really good fit for them. But for some people, having something really balanced, having time for yourself, having time for your family and your community. And so knowing what you want. Again, you might not get everything, but you want to know the direction that you're moving in. And, um, and so that's also what do you enjoy doing day to day. Like I said, the people that I've worked with in the nonprofit sector, they had that vision, but the day-to-day -day work was a huge mismatch. And so that's some of the things that, um, that I want you to start thinking about. What kind of work activities give you the most energy? What do you enjoy the most? And this isn't necessarily, quote unquote, your passion, like I you know, wanna be a rock star, but it is, you know, I, I much, I would much rather work with um, creative projects than data collection, or vice versa. Knowing what you want and what you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis, that is a foundation that I want you to build, that you're building your career design on. And, um, and so you are your foundation. Um, you're the raw materials. So the self-reflection is super important. And gaining that clarity will help you with your job search and your job. And, and again, letting your strengths guide you. And I have been in jobs where I was adequate in pretty much all the jobs that I was in. But there were jobs where I had to fight against myself every day in order to be adequate. And then there were jobs where what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis was what I was really good at. I was much happier in the second and a lot more successful too. And, um, and so career design is also about creating a plan to get you where you want to go, but knowing that it needs to be flexible. Life happens. And, um, and so career designers are very adaptable and flexible because they know that there's more than one way to get to where they want to go. They've got that clarity. If one road doesn't take them there, they'll find another. So the metaphor that I like to use is that career design is like building a mosaic. Um, and so, for example, let's say that you want to build a mosaic of Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. So this is your vision. And then you take um, an accounting of what you have. So you've got some mosaic tiles, you've got some glass tiles, and ceramics, and some beads, and Look, I've got some Legos, right? And so we all have all these things that we don't necessarily think are going to fit into our job or job search, but there's still parts of ourselves that we want to recognize that we can build and work with. So the first stage of career design is knowing the raw materials that you're working with, knowing yourself. The second stage is creating a napkin sketch. You know what? Um, and so this is where you can play around with different ideas, different job titles at different companies, just to um, create something that you can, um, that's changeable, but lets you get to a stage that, that you're really excited about. And then from there, you start bringing in the, the activities of building your mosaic. And that's the networking and the figuring out what organizations you wanna work for and um, resume, LinkedIn profiles, all that stuff. Those are tools to build your mosaic. 
And so again, what starts out as you know, starry night for you might look like this. Here's your square mosaic tiles, or here's your glass mosaic tiles. So I mean, it's still the same thing, but depending on who you are, it's gonna look different, but still really beautiful, still a work of art. Um, beads, all right, you got lots of beads. You can make a mosaic out of that. And here's my favorite, made out of Legos. Yeah. And then this is also a combination of everything. And so we can bring all of who we are. And that's the, you know, the goal of career design, to bring all of who we are. It might not all fit in our final, um, our final work of art, our final career mosaic, but, um, <coughs> but it can also be used outside of our careers. And so again, if you love music, but don't want to actually you know, go through the process of being a rock star, you can still play on the weekends. Um, and, and you can bring your creativity in other ways. So are there any questions about career design as a concept? OK, great. Um, I'm sure things will come up. So, um, so career mosaic, wait, hold on. A little all over the place here. So, um, what I, I want to get to know you in a slightly different way than the introductions we did before. And so, what I'm curious about is who here knows knows what they want to do next, and is pretty aligned, like their their past is um, is allowing them to do that. So, just a show of hands, if okay, you know know what you want to do. Okay, great. So, about a, about a quarter of you. Um, what about people who are changing careers? So um, may, you know, might have some idea of what they want to do, but they know it's not what, what they've done in the past. And, okay, okay, a few more. What about the people who have no idea? Yeah, okay. So, so what I've created, um, the process of career design that I use, really walks through figuring out what you want to do because having that clarity, you kind of need that to write your resume, right? You know, you don't want to send out a resume that shows you as an analyst when what you're really wanting to do is um, social work, right? So, um, so being able to build on who you are, your past experience, your strengths to create, to figure out what kind of job you want to do, then that makes the rest of the job search much easier. Um, at the same time, for people who know what they want to do and are just trying to figure out how to get there, career design can help you get a little bit um, more clarity and, and understand how to communicate that. Because the clearer you are, the more that you can um, express that with the people that you're talking to, whether that's informational interviews, regular interviews, networking, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I one, I want us to walk away with stuff. So I've got a worksheet here that I'm going to pass out. And um, so just take one and pass it along. And so does everyone have a pen? Because um, again, I, one of my passions is neuroscience. I really love understanding why people are the way they are. And, um, and there's been a lot of research that talks about how actually writing things down mm -hmm. helps you to remember them so much more. And so some of the things that we're going to be writing down are really important. I mean, it's, it's your life, basically. So that's why um, I want you, you know, not to necessarily take pictures, but to actually write some of the stuff down. And, um, and so what... What I want you to start with is basically what's your goal. You know, what, what, from what you know right now, what kind of job do you want next? So just write that down. Um, so number one should be, what's your goal? Why did you come here today? I mean, here, seeing me, yes, you know, coming to a job searching organization, what are you hoping to be able to walk away with? Okay, 
the next one um, might this might take a little bit more thought than um, than the time that we have here, but it's to think about how would your life change? What would your life life look like once you've met your goal? Right? And so some of that some of that stuff because job search is really hard, right? So that stress of not knowing what you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis, that's going to go. Financial security, um, but just think about, you know, what, um, what is that going to look like? And this is where the more rich, you know, the more you can use your senses of I'm going to be more energized, um, or, you know, I'll finally get a chance to then remodel my house and this is what it's gonna look like. So knowing what, um, what the outcome of reaching your goal is gonna look like, that's starting to draw your vision for your future, something that's compelling. deeper, starts getting a little bit more reflective. And that is, what is it in you that might keep you from reaching your goal? So again, career design is all about leveraging the tools that you have inside of you naturally. And, but also inside of us, we have those um, voices of doubt, um, you know, we might not be very organized, that might get in our way. And, um, and sometimes we struggle with, you know, sense of self-worth as we're going through this. So what is it, and, um, and again, we're not gonna stop here, we're gonna come back to the resistance, to what keeps you from achieving your goal. But it's good to know what that is, identification of what can stop you um, is the first step in creating a strategy to move beyond that. So does anybody have any questions or is struggling with, with answering these questions? Okay. So let me just tell you what I want you to get out of today. And that is that you learn at least three new strategies in your tips. Something that you either have, you know never heard about before, or that, um, or that maybe you heard about, but you're like, okay, now I understand it. This is how I can use it in my life. I want you to walk away today with something that you can do today. So I'm gonna, you know, that's gonna be one of the questions of what can you do today. Because, again, neuroscience says once we start down a path, once we take um, a moment of action, then that momentum tends to carry us forward. And so if we leave today and then just put up everything on a the shelf, then that's not going to be as useful as, as um, taking a step. And then also just to ask yourself some new questions. So. So this is what I hope that you walk away with. And, um, and your goals might be different. I want you to fight for your goals. <laughs> so um, if, we're not, if I'm not meeting your needs, then again, we can talk afterwards, or you know, there'll be time for some question and answers. But again, I, just, I want you to start um, being able to implement something and asking yourself new questions today. All right. So, now that we're in a reflective mood, um, if we continue going down this sheet of paper, the next one is just your contribution, your cause, your purpose. So this is just the broader um, vision for your life. And this question, um, some people dive right in and can give me like 10 paragraphs of what the purpose is. 
Other people, they're just like, please, <laughs> don't make me do this. And I know, and again, we're all different. We all have um, different um, neural pathways, and we all have different personalities. There's a lot of stuff that's hardwired into us. But, but again, the stretch is to get you thinking, what, what kind of future compels you? And because one way of bre breaking through resistance is to understand the question why. Why am I redoing my resume for the 15th time? Because I want to do X, Y, and Z. For me, it's because I want, um, I want everybody to have the tools <coughs> to find work that is meaningful <coughs> and going to them. That's what gets me doing social media, which I really don't enjoy, because it, it moves me toward my why, which is really important to me. So here's some things that your why might be. Could be your job. Could be being a good parent. Starting a business. Writing a book. Music, art, making a difference in the world earning more money, um, leaving a legacy. So these are just some things, you know, to get you going. Again, you can take this with you afterwards, but this is kind of the foundation of career design, is knowing your why. So the second thing, and this is where it's going to start getting a little bit more interactive. It's going to, again, start with some more reflection. But um, how many people here are familiar with Myers-Briggs? Okay, just about everybody. So this is, you know, personality, introverted, extroverted, you know, sensing or, or um, intuitive. Um, and so these are your preferences. What, there's another aspect of human nature that doesn't get talked about a lot. And that is how do we initiate things? How do you start projects? What's your go-to way of making, um, yeah, of basically starting something new. And, um, and so I call this my modes of action. Um, this is inspired by Kathy Colby. She's created the Colby Index. Um, but so that's online if you want to take it. But this is kind of the quick and dirty. And, um, and so there are four different ways that most people start a new project. And um, so one modality is, um, is doing research. So think about, do you naturally question, research, analyze, evaluate, reality check? Do you really strive to become an expert in whatever you're doing? So if you know that you're going to do something, you're going to read the manual, you're going to go online, you're going to Google, and you're going to get as much information, that's the first thing you do. If that's how you initiate project, then you are a researcher. Another common way that people um, that people start projects is building systems, creating those color-coded file folders. Um, so if you are naturally drawn towards developing highly structured and sequential programs, planning things thoroughly, <coughs> if that's your natural go-to, then you're a systematizer. And we can, you know, we're all on this scale, but you know, this is a quick and dirty way. So then there's the experimenters, the people that their first instinct is let's try something new. Let's figure out what has not been done before and let's just <laughs> jump in and do it. So they're the ones that start with, with brainstorming and with coming up with these great ideas that no one's ever thought of before. Um, and, and they tend to be a little bit more risk taking. You know, it's just like if, if it's not risky, it's not worth doing. So if that's kind of your go-to way of starting something new in your experiment. And then we've got the hands-on people. Like, I like to build things. And um, I don't tend to work with a lot of builders because they are employed in fields where, you know, it's like carpentry or home remodeling. And, um, and often they, they get jobs, you know, electricians. So it's, it's the real people who are going to be very, very useful in Florida and Texas, you know? And um, so if you start a project by, let me build and construct a model of what this is gonna look like and then build out from there, and you're a builder. So 
Does, let me ask, does anyone not resonate with one of these? Does everyone kind of see themselves in one? And again, these are all spectrums. And, um, but what, what I want us to do is start thinking how our way of um, initiating action can serve us in our job search, right? And so, um, so let's just get a show of hands. How many people consider themselves to be researchers? That's their go-to thing. Okay, this is what I was expecting. Yeah, DC, it's kind of a big research now. <laughs> what about systematizers? Who are the people who like to plan? Okay, great, great. We've got, got a good group here. What about the experimenters? Just the crazy thing no one's thought about before. Excellent, great. Are there any builders in the group? Anyone who likes to work with their hands? Okay, so, so and, um, and again, some people are gonna kind of initiate in, in two or more, but for this purpose, what I want us to do is to get with the, um, wait, no, before we do that, um, what I want you to spend a minute thinking about is how your, mo uh, so think back to your, to your resistance. What is it inside of you that keeps you from reaching your goal? and spend a minute thinking how your mode of action can help you to overcome that. So for example, um, so I, I'm an experimenter first, researcher second, and, um, and so I, one of the things that keeps me from achieving my goals is I get really overwhelmed. Uh, if I get, have too much data coming in, I just like try to do it all and then I just go. <coughs> so, I often come up with new ways of organizing information that, and so like, I'm not a systematizer. You know, I'm not someone who starts that and keeps and maintains a system, but I will create something new and um, to just kind of keep me going. So just spend a minute thinking about how your modes of action can help you overcome your system. Here's just another way of looking at the same, the same kind of information. So this is the, the spectrum that we're talking about. Um, so are there any questions about this? Now this is a lot of information. And so people who are like me get easily overwhelmed. They're like, why are you showing us this? And there's some people who really like the details, like tell me how this all works together. Um, so is, is anyone struggling with trying to figure out how their mode of action can help them overcome resistance? Yeah. So um, so do you mind sharing with us a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm a researcher, and uh -huh. um, I spend a lot of time trying to uh, uh, find organizations I'd like to work for. Yeah. And I, you know, you look at anything online, you can find anybody online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I, where I get stuck is trying to actually connect with somebody at those mm -hmm. places, because um, you can, it can take months, literally, to get a meeting yeah. with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, I can hit walls on things like yeah. that. So, um, so part of, part of what you're saying is that you, um, that you're moving from the research to something else, right? Um, but at the same time, your research um, initiator part of yourself can also be an asset in helping you figure this piece out. So you have done a lot of research on your companies, you've done research on people. So what about researching different ways to make connections? And, and believe, again, on Google and a lot of job websites, there's gonna be 15 different ways to connect with people. You know, LinkedIn, email, networking, you know, putting a mass email to everyone you know saying, do you know anybody who works here? And, um, and so, so again, like our, our main mode of initiating action can't take us all the way to the finish line. It just gets us started. Okay, yes. Okay, so I am, um, 
I've been in different fields in politics and social work, and mm -hmm. now I want to go into being a journalist, international journalist, and producing documentary films. Mm -hmm. So because of my age, because I don't have a long history, I'm not going to get hired uh -huh. uh, be by any of these firms. They want young girls. But I, for instance, I was on a TV program the other day of uh, debating, and the, one of my co-panelists said, oh, we should start a biz thing, da 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 Because in her mind, I was what she was looking for. Right. So I, I called her, and she, I don't know if she'll get back to me or not, or if it was just something in the moment she liked. So I'm realizing I need to actually be a startup. And so, so where are you here? Well, I, I figured I'd research and then experiment. Because uh -huh. it's not just researching, it's also, I mean, networking I'm seeing is like the key element here for me, is meeting the people who will have the same vision. And, and also because I'm very, um, let's get the core, let's tell the truth, let's expose these corrupt governments. That's not as quite as popular in the journalistic field as. Right, right, okay. So again, what we're doing is we want to bring it down to here's a specific place where I'm getting stuck and how can I use who I am naturally <coughs> to help overcome that. So part of what I'm hearing from you is, so what is starting a business that does, you know, this kind of international journalism and documentary stuff? What does that look like, right? I mean, that's that's. Part I mean, I've started businesses. I have businesses, right. but this is we're talking big money, and right, it's just a it's it's a bigger yeah. realm than I've been in. So, can you see how you know doing research, you know, can help? So to to find um, similar businesses and see like, how uh, the, the Intercept that was just started by Pierre Audemars and right, Ray Gould, et cetera, et cetera. So doing some research, how did they do that, right? And so, so again, this is just to get you forward momentum. It's not going to take you all the way to the finish line. But what I want us to do now is get with each other. Um, so let's have everybody stand up. Here's another neuroscience tip. Sitting, not good for us for long periods of time. Right? Um, that's not just neuroscience, that's physical science too. And so, um, so, but what they have found is that by standing up, moving around, changing your posture, every between 25 minutes to 60 minutes helps, um, helps shift our brain out of one mode of thinking, um, out of focusing into integrating. And so, um, so I just want us to, um, to just, you know, see what it's like to stand up and also, Job search stuff tends to be pretty stressful, right? <laughs> um, just from my own experience, I'm going to make a blanket statement. Searching for jobs is really stressful. And what happens to our bodies when we get stressed is that we hunch our shoulders, we tighten our stomach muscles, we breathe in our chest, and, um, and we tense our muscles because this is the perfect position to be in the fight or flight or freeze. So our, when we get stressed, our bodies are like, there's something that's gonna kill us. And I've gotta be ready to run or to hit them or to stay right here. And so we don't differentiate between, um, between a tiger about to eat us and us getting rejected from a job. And so we do the same thing. But that also means that if we do something different in our bodies, then our brains change. We start producing different neurochemicals. And the best way of doing that, does anybody have any ideas? Breathe. Breathe. Breathe from our belly. When we breathe from our chest, which almost everyone does, myself included, it keeps us in that fight or flight. So just since we're standing here, this gives us the opportunity to be a little bit more spacious. Let's just take a couple of deep breaths. So just in, and then when we exhale, let it all out. Breathe in some more fresh oxygen, right into our bellies, and breathe it out completely. And this is one thing, keep going as long as you can, because that really um, triggers our relaxation response. Our brains function better when we're relaxed. 
when we're stressed out, our prefrontal cortex, which helps us plan, which helps us be creative, it shuts down. We get into that, you know, that fight or flight, and it is instinctual, not helpful for us in writing resumes. So, I set a timer for myself. I don't sit in one place longer than 25 minutes. Even if all I do is stand up and take a deep breath and then sit back down. I still do that because my, that's, that's how I keep my energy going. Okay, so now that we're all up and refreshed, um, I want the researchers, we're the biggest group, I want the researchers to come over here. The, um, the systematizers to come up front. And then the experimenters in the back. And if you're, if you are um, more than one, then just choose something that's got, got people in it. All right, so researchers all over here. And basically, I want us to get into groups of your time. So have we all identified the experimenters? Yeah, I mean, that is a researcher, but I want to focus more on the experimenters. So I want us to get more of their four or five, because this is way too many for us to actually have a conversation. So once you've got a group of, you know, three, four, five, find a place to sit down, and then yeah 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 Yeah. 
Yeah, I heard that. But I don't know how to find out. researchers that's where we dig in a lot right. but that getting out and networking and meeting people is yeah you know, there's strategy. 
Yeah, and there's so much information that aren't on job boards. And there's interesting ways of using job boards, too. Like, you can find organizations by looking at job boards and see who's hiring. So, so again, that research instinct, um, we just need to put you in, in a different lane and say go. Can I add two more things that job boards do? Yeah. They give you current job titles. Yeah. Because job titles have changed. You used to be HR director, now it's human resource management or whatever. They also give you what companies are expecting mm -hmm. for different positions in terms of experience and certification. Right. Those are very useful to keywords. So how do I, yeah. and keywords, how do I match? Where do I fall when competing for this kind of job? So if we use job boards just to find jobs, then that really limits us. In fact, I'm sure this has been said, you know, and that you heard it, that applying for jobs and job boards is the least effective way of getting a job. It simply is. Yeah. And um, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It does. I've gotten hired through a job board before. But it is, but the majority of the jobs that I've had in my life, I got through my network. And the majority of people here who have gotten jobs um, have gotten at least one job through their network. And what, what career design allows you to do is leverage your network more effectively because you know what you want to do and you know the value that you bring. So anything else, any other strategies that people want to share? Yeah. I think one thing that resonates with all of us is that we, in this day and age where people are so busy that we put self-imposed limitations on our networking of, oh, I don't want to bother this person or, you know, not being as assertively out there as we all could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, so I mean, there's there's so many ways that we keep ourselves from um, doing what we want to do. So many ways. And so, as we can learn how to use our strengths to get over them, that is super useful. And not only use our strengths, use each other, right? And so, one of the things that you know, before we go, I that you know everyone shares at least name and contact information <coughs> with somebody in their group or somebody here to be a resource for each other. So I, I saw your hand, I want to go back here sure. because this group has Did you have something you to say? Oh okay well one of the, the keywords that we came up with is even though experimental or experiment was the name of our our mode of being, uh -huh. we actually decided that it was that we were creative. Yeah. We were able Absolutely. to flex and move and step outside of the box and use the world as it comes to us and not <coughs> as they make us use it. And um, yeah. you know, as I was listening to this woman, it's like I've had any number of conversations just with people in different places, meetups, lunch, you know, next to me on the train and you start learning about, you know, things that are going on and it sparks ideas and, and, and that's the way that we have been moving through the world. And, and the, the, the job market is actually very limited for us because most places don't want creative people. They want you to do things the way they do. And we get burned out because we can't do it that way all the time. So entrepreneurship is really the way. But another thing that I didn't tell the group, which is another area where flexibility and creativity is really needed in this country, is in disaster work. Mm -hmm. People who do the best <coughs> disaster work are people who can be flexible. Mm -hmm. Not people who really learn the system, because you have to be able to spin on a dime yep. because of the way things can happen. Yep. And you can imagine in Florida, a lot of the men who do this work thought it was going to go up the east coast. How do you control mother nature? You don't. You know that. As yes, a woman, actually. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything can happen. So uh, we as a group have to realize that a value, we have a value, and we need to acknowledge that. And when we get right. turned down, it's probably not the best place for us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, that's true. That's true. And, and this, this is fabulous, you know, because again, we, some of us fit comfortably in boxes. That's great. Yes. You know, there's boxes to be fit into. Please fit in those boxes. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people who don't. And and I think the challenge is that the people who don't fit in boxes have been told fit in this box. <laughs> and um, and so that not only limits and hurts us, but it also, you know, here's my idealistic side saying it deprives the world 
of what the creatives have to offer, yeah. what the researchers have to offer, what the builders, systematizers have to offer. If you are doing stuff that you don't naturally glow in, then you aren't able to bring your best self. And so, so the world gets deprived when we fight against who we are. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be in a job where we're nothing but creative, right? I mean, we, we you got to implement, you got to systematize, you got to research this stuff. But we got to, you got to do some of that. That's got to be a part of your life somehow. And and so so again, this is a way for you to start thinking and asking different questions. What can I do differently that builds on what I do naturally? to get me to the goal that's important for me. And then the other thing is, a lot of the employers are, um, when you go to interviews, you're hiring people so much younger than you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I went to interviews, and I had all this experience, but then they go and hire somebody 22 years old. Yeah. Um, yeah. 25 years that's old. And, I mean, in some, in you know, international it's development, it's it's we talked about that, yeah. you know, they're very budget constrained, even more so now. So they are going to go for, you know, the, the, the cheapest that they can find that can do the job theoretically. Um, there are other um, avenues where experience is a real asset, and um, and so so again, there's reality. There's things that we're going to have to recognize. This isn't a limitation. This is an obstacle. This um, career design is not about getting rid of obstacles. It is finding ways around, over, under, through, yeah. using who we are to do that. Right. May I just add something? You, you talk, you're, you're addressing vitamin A, which is attitude. Uh -huh. And I worked for an organization that changed the way I answered the phone. And what I found during this, my, my career transition is that attitude is everything, and you can talk to yourself, I'm getting out of bed. And I had the experience of talking to two different career coaches, and one of them, they gave me the same advice, but the one guy made me feel like a take on the world, and the other guy made me feel like, you know, going out and <laughs> jumping in the Potomac. <laughs> and it, um, it, it does matter how you talk to yourself, it does matter how you talk to other people. And I, I have been to a job um, networking group where it was, you know, it was like a little black rain crap cloud was right over us, like, oh, there are no jobs in this field, oh, and it, it makes all the difference in the world how I answer the phone, how I address somebody, um, mm -hmm. and what I tell myself about you know getting out of that. I think that's fabulous, and you know one one of the things because I do I work with a lot of people who you know have really big visions for themselves, and um, and are struggling with how to get there, and basically in in the field that I mostly coach in, um, a lot of it's perseverance. Like you just have to keep going and keep going and keep going, find another way, find another way. And the job search process is not about finding the most efficient way to get a job. It is about managing yourself. It is about finding ways to keep yourself motivated when things <coughs> are tough because they're gonna be tough. And, um, and so really, a lot of career design, how I conceptualize it, is about how do you keep going? And using your strength is so much more effective than using your weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The only thing I want to share is that somebody once said this to me when I was working on my career, and it really helped me, is that don't substitute action for progress. I can yes. sit there all day long and be busy, 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 yeah. read, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, I oh, look what I've done. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I really do believe that, um, and of course since I developed it, I believe that it's effective, okay. um, but that, you know, this process of knowing yourself, creating the general napkin sketch of what you want to do, taking steps to build your network, do, you know, do your research, that all of these things that I work with my clients to do, I do think that it's one of the most effective ways to get a job. Um, at the same time, not everybody gets a job in the time frame. Nobody gets a job in the time frame that they want. <laughs> um, and 
very few people get a job in the time frame that they expect, right? And that is, again, the nature of reality. If you're really clear about what you want to do, sometimes it takes time. And so the goal <coughs> is, is not necessarily like I'm doing something wrong, I need, or I, this is too hard, I need to just go back to what I know, which is being miserable <laughs> in a field that I don't love. Um, it is, all right, how can I use the tools that I have? You know, my network, my inner resources to keep going. All right, so we've got a little bit more content here. So, um, so thank you guys. This was super useful. Um, or hopefully, I thought you things you can think about. So I've, I refer it as building community. 
Um, these are the people, these are your people, like go to meetup groups and do the things that you enjoy. They have connections. And so the more you can build community, um, the easier you make your job search be. And so extroverts tend to be able to go into rooms of strangers with ease and talk to people. Introverts tend to um, build deeper relationships and do much better one-on-one. -on -one. Often introverts um, do much better writing. And so, you know, do some really good emails to people that you don't know rather than call them up on the phone or go to an event. So, um, so yeah, if we had more time, we would, you know, have, you know, kind of a back and forth, you know, what do introverts do? What do extroverts do? This is something that, again, we can, we can talk, talk to each other afterwards. We can think about this ourselves. In fact, during our introductions at the beginning, some people are like, yep, I'm an extrovert. So, um, so if you're another extrovert, you might want to talk to them about how do they do stuff. You can also, introverts tend to also be very to the point when they say things. So the people who gave three words and no more, most likely, not necessarily, most likely an introvert. Um, so, but again, these are just aspects of who you are and how to utilize them in your job search. Um, so another exercise that we've got on the back is thinking about your ideal day. So, um, so this is, you know, this is something that I can, you know, have us do like this visioning exercise, take some deep breaths and, you know, imagine that you're waking up early and energized in the morning, excited about your day, you've got your dream job, what time do you wake up? What do you do in the morning? How long is your commute? What does your day look like? What do your coworkers look like? Um, how, what time do you start work? What time do you end work? Um, what do you do after work? So just kind of what does your ideal day look like? And this, again, is part of creating a future vision for yourself that can help you see what's important. So for example, if you're applying for a job and, um, and you know, they're pay, you know, you're not able to bump them up with salary, um, but if you know that ideally you want to start work at 9 a.m., negotiate for that. I don't want to be here at eight with everybody, you know, for, for me to take this job. That's an easy yes for them to say. And so for you to think through what does your ideal work day look like, you know, it gives you something to build towards. It can also give you some leverage with, with negotiations, things like that. Um, so the other thing that's useful about doing an ideal day exercise and I encourage you to do this, because it can also help you structure your job search day. Because that that's one of the challenges. If you don't have a job and all you're doing is job search, you feel like you need to be working all the time and you resist working all the time. So use your ideal day to help structure that. You know, make sure, don't just jump into the computer. Spend your morning doing the things that, get you, that would get you ready for a typical working day. So again, these are things in yourself that can help you, you know, uh, go towards the future where you're going to make the biggest impact and also help you right now as you try to negotiate some of the challenges of looking for work. Um, a couple other visioning exercises, um, nine lives, which is if you had nine lives and one job for each life, what would that be? That helps you think through what are what are the things that are most important to you? What are the things your childhood dreams? Um, and then my balanced life, that's just a way of thinking about how many hours a day should you be sleeping? How many people really think about that? They just sleep whenever <laughs> they can fit it in. You can start with that. How, how much time do you want to spend exercising, being in front of family versus working? So all of these, and my timeline, again, is an exercise to just kind of think through your future. What do you want to accomplish before you retire? What do you want to accomplish after retirement? So, um, so these are all different exercises in my career design studio. Um, and, and there's 
a lot more in there as well. But these are the things that I find to be the most useful for understanding yourself. Okay. Um, so I think the one thing that, before I open it up to, to questions and answers, is for you to just think, what is the one thing that you can do today with either what you learned or what you know you need to do um, you know, to help your job search? And um, that is the very end on page two. It says plan one thing I can do today. So just take, take 10, you know, take a minute and um, just one thing that you can do today and then open for Q&A. Um, be the change careers.com 
If you go there, if you're interested, I do provide um, a 30 minute consul free consultation. So if you want to talk to me about anything that came up for you during this time or seeing if working with a coach is useful for you, you can sign up on my website. And also my career design studio um, is the um, public version is going to be launching in, um, within a month. And so if doing an online computer-based program, if you think that would be useful for you, go there. You can sign up for that too. You'll get an email when it's ready to go. So it's been a delight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We really value you and need your feedback. So if a lot of you have these on your form right now, so I made some more. If you need a, if you need a quick evaluation form, please uh, pass those around if you need them. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh,